it's it's difficult to get something to behave in all of these points. Well, mm-hmm. in racing, who gives a crap about idle? Right. We can pull. We got this. Hot, we can pull power right here. Everything to here. And in airplanes, yeah, we we're middle range, but it was all right here. Yeah. Um, whereas on a, a road car, we got to have idle, cruise, full power, and all that stuff. And so um, being able to target that narrower range meant I was able to change the engine configuration to, to suit the airplane use. Mm-hmm. And so we make this 2.6. Um, we use um, forge pistons and from JE, the full rounds at the time. And we put it on an airplane and we go flying it around. It makes great torque. It has better fuel burn than the other engine ever had, even though it's got more displacement. Um, I have some cams made custom for us for this thing. And the machine is just really good. Hmm. It's really good, better than it's ever been. And we fly it down to Oregon for some stuff. And we're flying home. And I pull the power back on final. And all of a sudden, I'm down a few cylinders. Uh oh, and you don't have yeah. that many cylinders to start with. No, no. <laughs> and, and so what happened mm. was cylinder four, um, which on the airplane is the front right corner because the engine's on backwards. Oh, uh, okay. Cylinder four piston broke in half at the wrist pin line. Well, and I made a 650 cc oil pump out of it, and it's just sucking oil out of the crankcase and dumping out the exhaust valve. Just down the plane, Whoa. smoke's billowing out, and we're coming in to land at the airport. Luckily, it was our home airport. And um, we, we we get it, we take it apart, and we look at the pistons, and they're rainbow colored on the back. You know, like when you get oil and water, that rainbow coloring? It's not the same thing with aluminum. Right. Yeah, with aluminum, means we annealed it. So we the piston had got hot and stayed hot for so long, we had changed the metallurgy of the piston. And when I dialed the power back, that piston was glowing red hot. All of a sudden, I stopped giving it hot fuel and combustion. It just gets cold air. It shot cools down. It wow. fractured right in half on the wrist line and just oh, snapped. Smokes. Yeah. So that was when I learned about annealing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that happened a couple times. Um, oh. Same exact scenario happened a couple times to me. And so I was continually trying to find a way to make it work because we still wanted the two six because it performs so damn good. Well, and, and yeah. real quick there, how long did it take you to figure out that that, I mean, you, you just said what happened and it all makes sense, but I'm betting that that was not like, it did not come nearly that quickly when you tore the engine down or may, maybe it did, but. Um, obviously it all takes time, right? Take yeah. turn it down all that. And so I didn't know that that's what the rainbow had meant. So I sent the pistons to JE. And they said, oh, see this spot here? You did this. And we checked this, uh-huh. and it broke here. So they explained how the piston failed just from, the, from exposure to high heat for, for too long. Okay. Um, and then I determined that, oh, I dialed it back, cooled it off really quick, and that's when it snapped. You know, So I changed the metallurgy of it, and then I snapped to pull the power back. Um, so I was determined to, you know, to still build these two sixes and thought, well, I'll change a few things and see if we can keep the piston cool up. And it, it was basically like six hours at full power, dial it back, break. Then I got wow. towards like eight hours at full power, dial it back, break. And so, you know, there was this trend, you know, this six hour soak time became an eight hour soak time. And so the things I was doing were helping, but it just wasn't enough. And so that's when I really started to realize that piston material is important. You know, like it's really important is what you're using to help handle the heat. And um, I also at that time learned the benefit of the factory cast pistons. Mm. Never had that happen on a factory piston ever because they got all the silicone, okay. you know, all the, all the silicone in them helps them to, to reject the heat and, and they, they stay, um, they stay being annealed. No, I'm just kidding. They, they, they don't anneal and stuff. Right. And the, yeah. the, the piston doesn't, doesn't grow a ton. So at these, that was the other thing we had to deal with too was much larger piston wall clearances on these aluminum pistons because the high duty cycle, a lot of growth. Mm-hmm. And they were full round forgings and those had a lot of growth. And um, so we were just constantly battling this, this engine, how to make it um, better. And, and that's when I started doing different rods and other things too. So the other question I have, and it, 
like endurance racing, but then the air, airline or airplane uh, use ties into this is service interval or, or teardown interval, which is something mm-hmm. where I'm guessing that that was, that was, that was something you guys had to figure out. Like if you have this engine, like you're, like you're saying six hours, it like somewhere in that six hour point is where there's a potential failure. Then you're able to stretch it to eight hours. Were you having to not only develop, figure out how to develop this engine to make the power that you wanted to make, but also kind of figure out how long and in what conditions the engine would, would last correctly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had to do the tuning for it and we shipped the packages complete with tuned ECUs on them. And we had these dual mega squirt systems. We had two mega squirts on this. We had like redundant engine management with it. Okay. Um, the idea was that if one mega squirt took a crap, you flip the switch and the other mega squirt would take over. Wow. Um, and so what I did, I was like, hey guys, we can tune these differently too. You know, like I can set one for higher octane fuel. So if you're running one at low lead, it'll run more effectively than if you run, you know, motor gas. Hmm. They call it low gas, motor gas in the airplane world. And for, for you know, car automotive unleaded fuel. So we started doing that as well. But, you know, the big thing too, like exactly that you said, I couldn't release this new engine until we figured it out. You know, mm-hmm. the old engine we had pretty well figured out. Um, we did have some issues when guys would would go off on their own and modify the engine. Um, one of them was running too big of an oil pump. And that's all I'm allowed to tell people not to do. Like, don't run that 12 mil pump. Like, you're going to do any good. Um, we had a guy put a 12 mil pump on a single overhead cam 251 and oh, wow. all the bearings out of it within hundred, hundred hours. Wow. Um, yeah. That way when you cavitate that much oil and shear it inside the pump and all of that continuously, like it just breaks it down really fast. Sure. Um, and aerates it. And then you're feeding air pockets into your, your, what's supposed to be a stable film, you know, between yep. the two surfaces of the air in there, it ain't stable air compresses. So, yeah, um, that was that was where I learned too big an oil pump was bad, you know. Um, Thanks for tuning in. To hear the whole conversation, click below for the full episode of this podcast or tune in every week on iTunes or Spotify. If you like these episodes, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because your support is what makes all of this possible. As always, this show is brought to you by Flatirons Tuning, your premier source for any Subaru, OEM, or aftermarket parts. Check out our website at flatironstuning.com. And as always, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning.